in the previous session we discussed about properties of the set of all complex numbers and we showed that the set of all complex numbers with respect to addition and multiplication is a field is a field and already we know that the set of all real numbers with respect to usual addition and usual multiplication is also a field this is we know that in the previous session we have proved this now the solution is to note that note that c contains r that means all the real numbers are also complex numbers because if we consider any real number consider any real number x i can express that x as x plus i into c i have told this in the previous session also any real number is a complex number with its imaginary part equal to c so it is of a complex number form so it will be complex number so any real number is also a complex number so i can say the set of all real is subset of the set of all complex numbers now now all the set of all real numbers try to impose those binary operations which we have defined on c in making c as a field we have defined two binary operations so impose or restrict those binary operations to the set of all real numbers that means so if you consider any two real numbers so make consider them in the complex number form so x is a real number so i can write it as x plus i0 one and y can be written as y plus i into c now add these two real numbers as we add two complex numbers so i have started with two real numbers and i have taken them in the complex number form and add them as we add two complex numbers so how we will add two complex numbers so we will add the real part separately and the imaginary part so x plus y plus i into 0 plus 0 is 3 so i into 0 is 0 so we get x plus 5 so what is this x plus 5 it is addition of two real numbers so addition of two real numbers is as same as addition of those two numbers in the complex form that means the addition operation of the set of all real numbers coincides with the addition operation of the set of all complex numbers so we can take the same binary operation of the set of all complex numbers to the real numbers also in the same way we can see the product also now considering these two real numbers in the form of a complex number that is x plus i into zero into y plus i into c so multiply this as we multiply the complex numbers so if we have a plus i into b c plus i into d what is the product it is it is ac minus b a c minus b d plus i into ad plus b c a b plus b c so what we got x so the multiplication operation on the set of all complex numbers can be restricted to the set of all real numbers also that means what is this this is product of two real numbers it is as same as product of those two numbers in the complex form so i can restrict the operations on c to r so they are one and the same operations on r coincides with the operations on c so i can say i can say r is a r is a subfield of 
as a subfield of C. Or as a subfield of C. So in this note, we have to recall the definition of a subfield. Subfield means if we have a field K, if we have a field K, then any subset yes, of K is said to be a subfield. Is said to be a subfield if if it is itself a field with respect to the binary operations defined on K. In say K is a field, we would have two binary operations on K. Right? If you restrict these two binary operations to the subset f of k, f of k, f has to be a field. f has to be a field with respect to the binary operations defined on k. Then we will say f is a subfield. So here also we have the same situation. So first of all, r is a subset of c, where c is a field. Now let's see those binary operations to R. So I have restricted here. So when I restrict the binary operations on C to R, R is also a field because these are the binary operations on C, and those binary operations coincide with the binary operations on R with respect to which R is already a field. So R is a field. R is itself a field. With respect to the binary operations defined on C, defined on C. Hence, I can conclude R is a subfield of C. R is a subfield of C. In other words, in other words, we can say C is C is a field extension. C is a field extension of R. I can say C is the field extension of R. So in this one, I have to recall the definition of field extension. Field extension is nothing but so if K is a field, my dear F is any subfield of K, then we can say K is an extension field of L. Or K is field extension of L. Here also R is a subfield of C. So in other words, or in other words, we will say C is a field extension of R. Or so C is nothing but C is nothing but R of R. R of R. So you know how to define this set. R of I means it is the set of all numbers of the form A plus I into B, where A and B should be equal to the set of all A numbers. And this is nothing but the set of all complex numbers. That means we have got this field extension R. We have extended the field R to C with the help of the imaginary unit I. So first, so first try to define R of I. So this is how we define the set R of I. R of I means A plus I e to B where a and B should be over R. And we know that by the definition it is nothing but the set of all complex numbers. So we have got this field extension. We have got this field extension C from R using the imaginary unit I. So hence I can conclude that C is a field extension of R by, by the imaginary unit by the imaginary unit I. By the imaginary unit I. So this is about the point C is a field extension of I. Now we have to talk about degree of that extension, degree of the field extension. So to talk about degree of any field extension, so first you have to observe that whenever, whenever, uh, in general, if k is a k is a field extension, field extension of yeah, suppose if k is a field extension of f, yeah, you can observe that k is a vector space. 
is a vector space over here. I got observed this thing. Whenever k is a field extension of here, k will be a vector space over here. Because k will be spent to addition in an addition to as it is a field. Right? As k is a field, k is a field, k will be an addition group and on and to say that it is a vector space, I will define a scalar multiplication. Where I have to bring scalars from here. So scalar multiplication, how can I define? So alpha, if alpha is any scalar, and suppose k is any element of k, then alpha into k will be nothing but nothing but. So the scalar multiplication will be nothing but product of two elements of k because K is a field extension of the sequence. We have to be, we have to be a subfield of K. So any elements of the are also elements of K. So alpha is a scalar means alpha is an element of the and then is an element of K. And already K is an element of K. So alpha and K can can be defined as product of two elements of K, which is defined as K is a field. K is a field. It has two binary operations. One is the addition, the other is multiplication. With respect to addition, it is an abelian group that are taken care And this multiplication operation on the set of all uh, elements of K can be regarded as the scalar multiplication operation. Scalar multiplication operation. So hence, K will be a vector space. So to say, it is a vector space, we have, we should have two conditions. One is, it should be an abelian group with respect to the first operation, and there should be some operation called scalar multiplication, satisfying some properties. So, uh, here I am not very quite close, so try to make it up on your own. So, just I am noting this point. Very find this part is your work. So, whenever k is a field extension of here, K will be a vector space over here. So this is the observation which you have to make here. Now, K is a vector space. So for vector space, we can talk about basis. We can talk about basis, right? So this is the general thing. Now I come to the particular thing here. So as C is a field extension of R, C will be a vector space. C will be a vector space over R. Now, if I want a basis for C, basis for C. So basically, what is C? C is the set of all numbers of the form A plus I into B, where A and B are any real Now, what do you mean by a basis? Basis means it is a linearly independent spanning set. Spanning set means it is a set of vectors which should, which should span the whole set of all complex numbers. That means it is a set of vectors which can be used to express all the complex numbers. And that basis would be 1, comma, i. So these are this is a set of vectors which will be a basis. First of all, it is linearly independent because so if you consider any linear relation c1 into 1 plus c2 into i equal 0 so this equation forces c1 and c2 should be equal to c because these two are of different time so if you consider any linear relation equal to 0 this forces both the scalars to be equal to 0 hence 1 and i are linearly independent. And also, these two vectors will span the whole set of complex numbers. So these two vectors are enough to write any complex number, any complex number. So if I want to write, if I need the complex number a plus i, what I have to do? I have to multiply the real number a, that is the scalar a to the vector 1 plus plus the scalar b to the vector i. 
So just using these two vectors, I can generate the whole complex numbers using the real numbers. Scale as real numbers. Yes. This will be a base. This will be a base. And cardinality of the basis will be nothing but the dimension of the vector space. Cardinality of B is 2, cardinality of B is 2, and hence dimension of this vector space. Dimension of the vector space C over the field of real R is 2. The dimension is 2. And this dimension is taken as the degree of the Field extension. So degree of the field extension is nothing but dimension of the vector space over the field, over the subfield. And that is denoted by so degree of C over R is 2. Is two. So it is just an extra information. So just you have to remember that C is a free extension of R and degree of that extension is 2. Right? So now so now I come to the concept of algebra extension. Algebraic extension. So, what do you mean by algebraic extension? So, for that, first we have to consider a field extension. Suppose, suppose K is a field extension of Y. Yeah. So, that means Y yeah, is a subfield of K. K is a field extension of Y means that Y yeah, is a subfield of K. That is, F is an arbitrary subset of K, which is itself a field with respect to the binary operations of K. So, in this situation, so given any element alpha of K is said to be, is said to be algebraic, is said to be algebraic if, if alpha is a root. If alpha is the root of some polynomial, if alpha is the root of some polynomial with coefficients, with coefficients in Y. Yeah. So whenever K is an extension field of Y, yeah, any element of K is said to be algebraic. Here I am defining the notion of algebraic elements. So any element of K is said to be algebraic if it is a root of some polynomial. It should be a root of some polynomial with coefficients in Y. Yeah. So if we have a polynomial with coefficients in Y yeah, and if alpha is a root, then I will say alpha is algebraic over Y. Yeah. And say alpha is algebraic over here. Yeah. So this is the definition of algebraic element. And if there is no polynomial, and if there is no polynomial having alpha as a root, then I will say alpha is transcendent. Transcendent. So transcendental is the opposite of algebraic. Any element of K is said to be algebraic over F if it is the root of some polynomial with coefficients in Y. And if it is not algebraic, that means if it is not the root of any polynomial with coefficients in Y, then it is said to be transcendent. Okay. Now, now, if all the elements of K are algebraic over Y, that means if you consider any element of K, if you consider any element of K, if it is algebraic, if it is algebraic over Y, then, then we will say this field extension is an algebraic extension. Algebraic extension. So the definition of algebraic extension is if 
and free extension is said to be algebraic extension. Suppose k is a free extension of k, then this extension is said to be algebraic extension if every element of k is algebraic over k. So this is the definition. So definition is a free extension. A free extension k of y is said to be is said to be algebraic. Is said to be algebraic extension if. If every element, if every element of K is algebraic over, algebraic over, yes. That means any free extension is said to be algebraic extension if every element of K is algebraic over. That means for every element K there should be some polynomial with coefficients in the f having alpha as a group. So this is the definition of algebraic extension. Now I have a field extension, right? C is a field extension. C is a field extension for R. Right? Now, now the question is, is this field extension is algebraic? Is this free extension is an algebraic extension or not? To say that this free extension is algebraic, what I have to do? I have to show that every element of C is algebraic over R. That means, given any element of C, I have to show that this is algebraic over R. So, what that means, given any complex number, I have to set a polynomial with coefficients in R having that complex number as a proof. Can I do this work? So start with any complex number. So Z is equal to A plus I will be any complex number. Now the thing is, now I have to set a polynomial with coefficients in coefficients in R having the Z as a now can you start such a polynomial? So and the answer is answer is the polynomial is x minus a whole square plus b square. So observe this polynomial. So it is a polynomial with coefficients in r because if we expand this, x minus a whole square is x square plus a square minus 2dx. Plus b square as it is. So it is a polynomial coefficient. Here the coefficient is 1. Here the coefficient is minus 2a. And a square and b square are constant. And all of these coefficients are from r. Because a plus i is a complex number means a and b are real numbers. And it is a polynomial with real coefficients. And what is its root? What are its roots? So to get the roots, I have to solve for x. So solving for x. So what I get? So x minus a whole square plus b square equals c. I have to solve for x. So x minus a whole square equals minus b square. Minus b square. So take positive square root on both sides. Positive square root means square root of any number will have two values. For example, square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. So I have said in the previous session, square root of a number means it is a number whose square is the given number. So if you square plus 2, you get 4. If you square minus 2, you will also get 4. So square root of 4 will have two values. One is positive value, one is negative value. Now take only positive square. That means we only consider positive value of the square. So if you consider that.
to apply only positive value that is plus square root of l. So x minus x whole square. We are going to square it out minus b whole square. Square square root gets cancelled. So x minus a equals here split this number. So square root of minus one into b square. So we use law of indices. So square root of minus one into square root of b square. So square square root gets cancelled. So what I get square root of minus one is i the imaginary unit. So we have x minus a is equal to i b. X is equal to a plus. Plus i. So if you consider the negative square root, we will get the x value to be a minus i. That means it is a polynomial with coefficients in R having having the roots a plus i b and a minus i b. We know that complex solutions will always occur in conjugates. So I will tell that in the future. So hence. For any given complex number, we could be able to find a polynomial with coefficients in R having having a plus i p as a root. So it shows that it is algebraic over R. The complex number that is equal to a plus i p is algebraic over R. And as z is equal to a plus i p is an arbitrary variable, it is a variable. So it, it will represent any complex number. As it is arbitrary, every complex number is algebraic over R, and hence by the definition of algebraic extension, this field extension becomes algebraic extension. So hence, hence we can conclude that C is an algebraic extension. C is an algebraic extension of the set of all real numbers R. And how we got this extension by the imaginary unit? By the imaginary unit. R. So we have extended the field R to C using the imaginary unit R. So C is an algebraic extension of R by the imaginary unit R. So this concludes the session, and I continue this in the.